So what we're going to be talking about today is red teaming. Um, this goes beyond a little bit more than what a typical pen test, typical engagement is. If you were here for the manipulating GUI elements, I'm sorry, I'm not decaf. I know it's a letdown, but a close second, maybe. So a little bit about me. I work for Dell SecureWorks. I'm one of our, the red team members, kind of just hanging out. I uh, specialize in AppSec, NetSec, mobile security. Generally speaking, I'm working with a team of two to four guys. I've got guys on site that are breaking in, dropping boxes on your network. Once they're in, it's my game. Uh, where you'll find me, Nate D. Mac on Twitter. You'll find me on IRC, on Freenode. Usually hanging out in the DC801 chat room, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just a word of note, this does not endorse, say anything for SecureWorks. I'm speaking on my own today. So, about you. Who in here are my blue team guys? Network security defense at your organizations. Couple of you. What about GRC, compliance guys? That. Who in here are my professional pen testers? Yeah. What about, who in here is responsible for your, app, your organization's security? Well, First off, the GRC guys, get out of here. No, just kidding. You guys make my life easy, make users sloppy. But blue team members, thanks. You guys do a, good, a lot of good work, work long, hard hours. You're doing what you got to do. For the pen testers, keep doing what you're doing. Let's keep fighting this good fight. And for who in here is responsible for your security, I'm disappointed. Every one of you should have raised your damn hand. Because just because you're not an admin, just because you're not involved in security doesn't mean I'm not going to exploit you to get break your company's security. By you clicking my link, I win. And you cost your company $191 million, like what happened to Target last year. Oh, oh, I forgot. Put all the fancy animations in and not even using them. Anyways, let's start with some quick definitions here about what a red team is and what's the defining factors and what's the differences. So who in here knows what a vulnerability assessment is? Anybody? What, what's a vulnerability assessment? Danny? Do you actually exploit them? Do you actually go in and do you do more with it? Great. That's exactly right. All I'm doing is I'm going to scan, do a gentle scan, look at what's running, what's listening. There you go. How about a pen test? Who knows what a penetration test is? What would be a penetration test? What would I be doing different? Definitely. Oh, and by the way, I didn't say this. I'm going to be asking questions. Please give me feedback, talk back. Let me know if you have questions, concerns, comments. Please chime in. You know, I don't want to be just standing up here to talk. I actually want to give you guys some good information, something you can take back to your organization. Yep. Generally speaking, I'm going to find a vulnerable service. I'm going to find every vulnerability I can on your network. I'm going to make sure I can penetrate those. I'm going to document the patches, the fixes. Here is everything. Usually limited to scope, though, meaning I'm coming in, I'm doing a network pen test. I'm not looking at all your applications. I'm not looking at your mobile. I'm not social engineering your users. Oh, it's a web app assessment? OK. I'm looking at just these web applications. I'm not looking at the network. I'm not looking at everything. Now, here's the fun. Red team. This is where it gets good. Who in here knows what a red team is? How you would do a red team? Yeah. Red team is, well, it's usually just a combination of the blue team. It's, if it's at all familiar with military operations, it's your op or your opposing force. The idea is you get a relatively benign group of people to go in, find the problem, and um, just make a point, exploit them without putting yourself at all. Yes, to an extent. 
So one thing about it is, especially in terms of IT, what is your environment? So for example, your users, your applications, your network, your physical security, your environment, everything you have, that is in scope for me. So if I want to come in, pick a lock at 2 in the morning, walk in and drop a box, great, I'll do it. I want to social engineer your CEO. Get him to click a link because there's a new article out in Harvard Business about, hey, security's great. You need to come read this article. Oh, it's a lace, tro it's a lace PDF. We win. The other fun thing about this is I am not looking for every vulnerability on your network. It doesn't matter if you've got MSOA 067 on 400 boxes sitting across the network. If they're not going to help me, I'm not going to explode it. And I'm not going to put that in my report because I'm not going to be looking for it. My job is to come in undetected so you don't know I'm there. Generally speaking, I get onto your network, you will never know I'm there unless I goof up. So danger. I'm going to say this up front. With a red team engagement, this is for companies that have an established security practice. They know how to monitor their logs. They have patch management. They have firewalls. They've got security teams, compliance teams. So I can promise you, if you don't have it, you will never know I'm there. And likelihood is, you are going to be pissed off at the end of this report. When I walked in, sat down at a cube, none of your users questioned me. I logged into your shares. Oh, wait a minute. Here's the master password list. Included your domain admin. Great. Where's that SQL server? Bingo. Game over, I won. I walked out with your credit card database. You fucked up, left it wide open for me. I walked out. I'm done in the day. Report's going to rep represent that. You're going to be bitter and hurt because, hey, this, this isn't fair. You didn't give us anything. And frankly, it wasted my time. So, as I said, this is for established companies. This is your Fortune 500s, your large institutions that really need that. But that's not to say that every company shouldn't be striving for this. So you're a small company of 20 people. Big deal. You've got an established security practices. You've built your organization. You've gone through pen tests. You've gone through vulnerability assessments regularly. Now let's get a red team in to tell you, hey, this is where your risks still are. So a little bit of a creepy story time here. How many of you, of you in here outsource your printer maintenance? Anybody? Printer maintenance. You got your big multi-function printers, copiers, scanners, fax machines. All in all, do everything, right? How many, so outsource the printer maintenance, you know, okay. Or have to call in a third party repair company from time to time because you don't have the in-house staff and technical parts to take care of it. How many of you in here would think that your printer will give away your entire network? You're right. So here, here's something to think about. Coworker of mine uses this. Walked in wearing a Technicolor shirt to service a printer. Walked up, put a box in line, two ports, started capturing traffic, velcroed it to the back of the printer, you know, pulled the printer apart a little bit, put it back together, walked out. Came back a week later, grabbed the box. Went home, pulled the creds off, pulled the traffic off it, pulled the creds out of it. Less than three days later, full domain admin, remotely. Think about it. We'll, we'll kind of get back to that in a little bit. Stopping a red team. Can it be done? Who thinks it could? But is it easy? No. So what I'm hoping, and this is kind of where I'm at, is I want to show you how you would stop someone like me. How you would stop my team when we come on site or when we're near you. Because if you're not paying attention, you're going to lose it. We've got three high levels of touch points. We have physical security, human security, information systems security. Those are the three areas within an organization that make up 
your security posture. As was said before, a lapse in one will lead you to a full compromise. Oh, I'm getting through this a little faster. Just kind of a little diagram of what I'm saying here. And they all interact. Humans, and we as humans, we use information security. We use technology. We go into that. The human factor also allows for the physical. How many of you in here have ever tailgated someone walking in or out of a building? Great. How many, how many of you in here have left a computer unlocked by accident and walked away? Didn't even think about it, left it unlocked, walked it away. Or how many of you in here, in your organization, bolt your PCs down? Bolt all your laptops down. Physically bolt all your servers into the rack with heavy duty cables and locks. Nobody? What would happen if I as an attacker walked in at two in the morning, pulled the server out, pulled all your drives out, decrypted everything that was on there, if you're even using full disk encryption, took the data, put it back before you got on site. Now I've just stolen passwords. Likely I've gotten a domain admin password or a server admin password. You know, what did I find? Oh, I found a web app server. Great, I've got something important there. How about a SQL server? Now I've got the SA password. What can I do? How many of you in here would know what I'd do with an SA password? What can I do with it? Even better, how about log directly in as a MyC or an MSSQL client? and start querying the database and do a backup to my own external box. What can I do with that data? Well, was that your credit card data? Was that all of your external users, their usernames, their passwords, their PHI, your healthcare organization, and I just stole all your PHI? What's going to happen to you? That's why I say a lapse in one will get you fully compromised. So humans, human security. A couple of things about us. We like to be helpful. How many, how many of you in here were taught by your parents, hold the door for people? Be polite. Help them out. You see a guy carrying an arm full of books or carrying an arm full of boxes or pushing a cart. What are you going to do? Oh, here, let me hold that door for you. Mm, yes, okay. We like to feel important. How many of you in here like to have your boss come up and say, good job? Or a client say, you know what, good job. Thanks for doing that. You know, it makes us feel good. We like to feel good about what we do. Or you hear from your wife, your significant other, whoever. Hey, good job. Thanks for doing that. We don't like conflict. As a human, we, our natural tendency is to back away from conflict. We stay out of conflict. As a group, we're okay with conflict because it's safety in numbers. But in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, I start getting up in your face, start getting real pressing with you. Uh, well, no, I'm done. No, I don't like conflict. So, the other thing about us, we're emotional. We aren't always logical. We do not always follow things through step by step by step and make the best decisions. We let our emotions play with us. And as, an, as a red team member, I love it. We are the weakest link in security. By far, 90% of what I can do as a red teamer can be done by just a social engineering engagement. The reason being we as humans our weak links in our organization security. Phishing emails, phone phishing, vishing. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do as an organization. If I can get you to click a link, open a file, give me your creds. Recent engagement, just a fun story about this. We're doing a red team engagement company. We fished 135 users. We had 90 fucking people. Give us their creds. Wow. 
What did we do? We played off the fact that there was a recent large snowstorm in the, in the northeast, up in the Boston, Philly, New York area, right? We said, hey, we're looking at a new experimental work from home program, so when things like these happen, we can allow you to work from home. We can give you an opportunity to do this. So what we need you to do is go fill out this survey. Give us some details. You need to log in with your credentials so we can log it. Every, pretty much everybody logged in and gave us their creds. We ran rampant across that network. And they're like, when we delivered the report to the customer, they just shook their head and cried. The other thing about it was, 90% of these passwords followed a very simple pattern. So for you red team guys in here, little trick, little pen test guys cracking passwords, here's something to look for. A capital letter followed by a predetermined number of lowercase letters, followed by a couple of numbers and some symbols. So instead of trying to brute force the entire key space, look for specifics. Generally speaking, users will use a capital letter at first. Why? They are required. So in your core organization, what is your general password complexity? A number, a capital letter, maybe a symbol, 10 or 12 characters. Think about that. Physical security. How many places have you gone into that don't have bad reader, bad, badge readers? Or how about no biometric access? Just because you have a badge doesn't mean I can't clone it. We do it all the time. Walk up, walk by someone, carry the badge reader stuff in our backpack, we clone your badge. We come back later, badge in, as you. With biometrics, that would stop it. Cheap locks, no locks. Just because your exterior is firm, you've got a solid exterior, does not guarantee your interior is not soft and squishy. Just because everything's set up nice outside doesn't mean that once I get inside, I can't get, that I can't get inside. So you don't need to worry about, do you have locks, badge readers, biometric access to get to your data center or your server room at the location, if you even have it set up correctly? What about no cameras, no alarms? Do you know if someone in your organization, whether maliciously, accidentally, or you have something else going on, walked, accidentally went into that server room or went into your telco room? Do you have an alarm there? Because if you don't, one thing I might just do is walk in, go to your telco room, plug in. Will you even know I'm there? And how many of you on a regular basis go check your telco room or your server room for extra boxes? Or a Raspberry Pi, for example, that I just plugged in on your network? How many of you? Uh, no, I want to see hands. How many of you in here go regularly physically check your server room for extra boxes? Do you have guys on site that do it? You know, in, the in a data center, yeah. Now, that brings a good question up. Do you trust AT&T completely to know that they're not plugging something in or they haven't been compromised? Exactly. Exactly. How do you know to trust these people? It's the old thing, trust but verify. You need to know, hey, wait a minute. I've just checked. This is out of place here. Why do I have this little tiny box that's no bigger than that sitting plugged into my switch and whose is it? What's it doing here? Or how many times do you go check that teleconferencing room where all your video equipment is for that little box that's plugged into the back of the TV sucking down your wireless and just sitting there because you've left your wireless wide open? and all your users use it. And how many times do your users use the same passwords at home that they do at work? Because if I can capture passwords going across that network on the wireless, you can be damn sure I'm trying those passwords for their internal. 90% of the time, 
It works. No cameras. Do you review your footage? Information system security. Now this is where it gets fun. Here's a few points to look at. The, your network scanners, your security teams, your compliance guys, your admins, everybody, they will not catch this. So how many of you in here, and again, this looks a little bit Windows-centric because most corporations do have a large Windows base. And just because you have some, some of your most secure stuff is Linux, Unix-based services, doesn't mean that passwords aren't going to be reused and there's not going to be direct ties. So how many of you in here have shares? Network shares. Really? That's it? Not everybody has network shares? Okay. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing the wrong type of thing then. Group policies. Got group policies? Do you check your group policies regularly to make sure that something hasn't been left over? Or checked your logon dot back? Checked your login scripts? Checked everything? Have you gone through everything? Mm, I doubt it. How many, how many of you in here run a perfectly configured DNS service? That I mean, there is no possible way that that's going on. And that all of your queries that may come out of every host on that machine on these machines now will get caught by your DNS meaning that if they fat finger instead of SRV01 and they type SVR01 it'll get caught that your DNS will catch that because if not NetBIOS will give your network away reason being if you're familiar with how Windows works in general it looks at its local system looks at its host file it doesn't have the name. It then asks DNS. It's going to get a DNS response back of a host doesn't exist. So what does it do? Hey, everybody, who's SVR01? Yep, I am. And by the way, here's the challenges. Here's, send me your hashes. I'll log you in. What do you do as a Windows client? Oh, here you go. And guess what? I've just captured your hashes. Now let's go back to what I said earlier. What are humans? The weakest link. What are their passwords likely going to be? Not that bottom password there. Hell no. That's too hard to type. What is it going to be? Something like B-Sides 2015. That's likely what their passwords will be. Which means Hashcat set a couple of masks. 20 minutes later, I have captured and cracked every hash that gets sent across this network. And so here's a question. By default, who in here has their DNS set up internally to have the name host WPAD and has a valid record for it? Think about this for just a second. What did I just say happens from a Windows client? So, and if you don't know what WPAD is, it's Windows by default when browsers fire up, they search for WPAD, looking for their proxy settings. If you don't have a valid response for that in your DNS, every time someone starts a browser on your network, guess what? I've just captured their hashes. And... Now, if I want to be a real dick and have even more fun with this, I'm going to say yes, and here is your proxy settings. All traffic comes through me. Oh, and by the way, to help you, here's an executable you need to serve them. Give them an executable to run that will now be my meterpreter payload. Who in here, besides you, Danny, and such, knows what meterpreter is? For those of you who don't know what it is, it is a very powerful shell that gets leveraged on your box that allows me to do whatever I want. Dump the hashes. If you've got administrative privileges, I can dump them clear text. I can start to use it to use your box as a proxy to get to other boxes. Just because I'm isolated to one VLAN, 
doesn't mean I can't get elsewhere because of your box, because it has access. Some more, your printers. So let's go back to that question I asked earlier. What about your printers? How am I doing on time? Oh, I'm a little early. So who in here knows why your printer gave you away? Your big, nice, multifunction, you know, the $25,000 printer you bought that does everything. Who in here knows why that gives it away? Nah. Anybody else have any ideas as to why? No. How do you log into them? What do you do with them? You're, clo you're close, but let's go one better. How many of you in here know that with your nice multifunction printer, you can configure a username and a password in there to scan the email or scan to a PDF on a share, right? Or you print to that. So let's think about this. Generally speaking, those devices have elevated privileged accounts. Not because they should, because most organizations do not know how to configure their shares correctly. So what do they do? They give that user elevated access. Reason being is Bob over in marketing needs to scan to his share. Rob over in IT needs to be able to scan to his share. The CEO needs to be able to scan to a little special share just for him. So what do they do? They don't know how to configure either multiple users, configure, it, configure their shares correctly to give just this little low privileged user right to scan here. So what do they do? Here, here's domain admin. Here's service account admin level. Give you access to everything. Right? So what happens? I plug in line. I capture your hashes. I capture the traffic going from your printer out and what's coming back. So I capture everything that that's printer doing. And how many of you in here know about SMTP? What do you know about SMTP? By default, what does it do when it sends an email, when it logs in? Is that encrypted? No, it's plain text. Have you configured a different user for your SMTP than your, what you're doing to scan to share? Because you're using your same internal domain, right? So what happens? You log in. It's clear text. I've been capturing traffic. What, do, what did I just take? I just took that password, clear text, off the wire. I come back a week, week later, take that box out, do something more with the printer, I'm gone. How many of you in here actually would have caught that on your network? Caught me putting a device in line, passively sniffing, not sending a bit of traffic other than forwarding it on an inline bridge and just sniffing everything as I go. Anybody? No. What about the tools your IT department installs by default? or they leave over by chance. How many of you in here have used the PS exec tools, the PowerShell, to, not PowerShell tools, the PS, uh, what is it, you know, the old, you know, Microsoft's PS tools? Sys internals, thank you. You know, you've got the ability to shut down, run commands, do everything from those, right? Your IT department builds the golden image. What about I need to manage how many different machines? Oh, I'm going to leave these tools around, not because I need them right away, because I'm lazy. So what happens? They leave them installed. Just because, as a regular user, I won't go look in C colon backslash random folder backslash tools, you know, oh, we're safe. Nobody will know these are here. 
me as an attacker, I get on your box, first thing I'm doing, I'm going through every damn folder and drive I have access to. And I'm going to suck every document you have on that machine off, and I'm going to read it. I'm going to play, I'm going to look at it. Oh, wait a minute. Can I modify it and put it back to you? Great. I've got more. Or can I exploit something with them? Or even better, you, you just left PS Tools installed with passwords, or you've left history for what these users have done. Great. Now I'm going to use that against you. So another thing. How many of you in here knows what SCCM is? A couple people. How many of you have ever validated every package that's on your SCCM and how often do you do it? How many of you are, know anything about it to where the fact that with SCCM, its admin creds are left within the configuration a lot of times so that you can push packages to install with administrative privileges and a user has to click, oh, okay, I accept to install. Your desktop deployment stuff, it gets left. Guess what, your creds are left. Now, good story, happened to a coworker of mine just recently. They busted SCCM, they pushed a new package. It was a interpreter shell. Their servers, by default, pushed and installed these packages immediately. Workstations would give them a chance to do it. He also thought, hmm, better make sure I'm getting enough shells. He updated the logon.bat for the domain to also include his meterpreter shell. His attack box crashed when the, just after his 8,000th shell came in. He had 8,000 active shells to different boxes on this network because of SCCM. What could you do if you're an attacker, someone maliciously coming into a network, and you had 8,000 shells on the network? Had a shell on every box in the network. How many of those boxes start up or run with administrative privileges? Your SQL Server just installed my package. I just took all your data. And you gave it to me because of your SCCM. Another thing, how many of you in here use something like SCCM or some of these other nice fancy desktop deployment tools and you can do PXE boot? So when Joe over in marketing gets a virus and screws everything up for the fourth time this week, you can just tell them reboot, hit F12, select this option. Any of you ever done that? Desktop deployment stuff? How many of you check those logs? Watch for servers boot or machines booting up and taking those images? How many of you have ever gone back and checked your DHCP logs for it to see what happens? Because I'll tell you what. This just happened for me recently. Got onto a network. It already had a few good findings, but I decided I want domain admin. So the admin credentials to join, you have to have domain admin credentials or very elevated rights to install a machine to the domain, to join it to the domain. So you're making domain level changes. So now, I boot up a VM, start pixie booting it. Gets up part way. Right as it's getting ready to join the domain, I disconnect it and stop the, stop the VM. So VMware, how, how does it do its memory? What does it use? Anybody know? Especially when you pause a machine. What does it do with its memory? It writes it to a file on the disk. What's in memory? when I'm trying to join a domain? What kind of credentials are in memory when I'm joining that domain? In clear text. Domain admin credentials are in that memory dump I just grabbed. Use another tool, pull the credentials right out of memory. Wait, I've got domain admin. And you just gave it to me because of the fact 
you're using SCCM or some other desktop deployment tool and you're not checking your logs, you're not restricting access to who can boot, you've got it on your public VLANs, all your major VLANs, so uh, anybody can do it. You don't have to go through any configuration to get that machine to take a new image. So, me as an attacker, I'm taking it. Because also, I, if I can't get domain admin, get unlucky, I don't get domain admin out of it, I've now got your standard build, which likely is going to point me in directions. It's going to have other tools installed. It may have thick clients installed. And again, we go back to the old question of NetBIOS on your network, right? Like I said, it's sending traffic out. How many of you in here doing development work, you know, you wrote a big thick client that's an application, but it's got to get something from the database, right? You got to be able to update data or pull data down. How many of you over the last few years have rewrote that to make sure that it's using proper paths, you're not doing any insecure coding practices, right? How many of you in here have ever, and if you don't want to raise your hand, you don't have to, but think about this, hard-coded credentials into your application to log into the database. Happens more often than not, especially, you know, you find an older application that was written 10 years ago. Nobody even thought about that. I pull that application apart, start looking through strings, dumping it. Oh, wait, here's the, here's the username. Here's the password to log into your database. There you go. Sloppy housekeeping. This is where it gets me fired up every time. You're leaving logs lying around on the machines. You leave logs lying around off your network shares. You don't check your network shares and don't validate that your users are following the rules. Engagement we're on right now. Just kind of give you an idea. Company thinks it's small. I wish I had this problem. By sloppy housekeeping, left a bunch of PII credit card type data on a network share. We went back to the customer and said, hey, look, Mr. Customer here, uh, you got this. They said, oh, yeah, that's just a child company of ours, not something we're really worried about. They only do $4 billion in dollars annually. That is nothing compared to the 990 billion we do annually. We don't care. Do you think the SEC or whoever else, regulatory commissions, that could be involved in this would care about that little $4 billion chunk? Because credit card data. Because very valuable, very sensitive information is left on a network share and just because it's a separate little child company, it's under this parent company, do you think they're going to care whose it was and where it was? Nah. What about one of these, you know, and you think about this. What about you leave that information lying around and you work for something like on the Wall Street Stock Exchange or you work somewhere else? and you've accidentally left around stock information or credit ratings for a company that have not been published yet. And me as an attacker, I see that. I go, oh, wait a minute. This company is about ready to explode in growth. I go buy up as many shares as I can. Or I find something else and I get you to buy it up for me. Because we've done it. We found a way to get your company to buy shares and put it to my account because you've had a vulnerability in your application. Now I just bought a million shares of Acme Corp. This rating is going to go from, you know, a very poor rating to they've got this new, great, innovative thing. They're going to skyrocket. The predictions are the stock prices are going to rise from pennies to dollars. Anybody know what that's called that's worked in the Financial Institute? What? Insider trading. Everybody in that organization that may have touched that will be going to jail or will be getting sued. And it's going to bust your company. That's called sloppy housekeeping. 
How many of you in here actually, and I, I want honest people, please raise your hands, review your logs on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis, religiously. Look through your logs. Anybody else besides one? You don't look at your logs? How do you know if I'm there? How do you know if an attacker is on your network? Just because you're not your antivirus, your anti-malware, you know your IDS, your NAC, your MAC filtering, all those things, just because they're not alerting, doesn't mean someone is on your network. So, thing about it is, just kind of give you here is a typical red team engagement. This will give you an idea. Generally, this will go anywhere from a few days to a week. We physically break in. Or we do a poof magic moment happens. We don't want to have you do a physical assessment for whatever reason. We're going to let you come in, walk in. We're going to give you unrestricted. We're going to give you guest access on this network. Here you are. You have no creds, nothing. Now let's see what you can do. Generally speaking, we start looking around on the network. We fire up. We start capturing traffic. We fire up a tool called Responder. Start NetBIOS name spoofing, like I was talking about. We capture creds. We find your hosts. Oh, okay. Can I log into your machine? I can. What do you have? I'm going to start looking around you. What's your neighbors? Okay, great. Now I'm going to jump there. I'm going to run Responder. I'm on that network. Capture more creds, more machines. Keep going around, keep jumping around. Oh, wait a minute. I'm also now reading your email. How many of you in ever here have ever been emailed a password or emailed someone a password? Thank you. How many of you have a corporate password reset functionality that you can do yourself? CA identi CA's identity manager, some of these other fun tools. Reset your password. Users on leave, because I found, you know, they haven't logged in in 30 days. Cool. I'm resetting their password. I'm logging in. When they get back, wait, my password's not working. IT help. Oh, okay. Here we go. Or here, let me go reset my own password again. In the meantime, guess what? I've read their emails. I know what they're doing. I've used their account to jump through your network. How do you distinguish me impersonating that user and that user? How do you tell the difference? So, okay. Now I'm jumping around. Oh, wait a minute. I see which users I want to target. I've read your entire AD infrastructure. As a regular user, we can do that. I see the users I target. Oh, wait, that, they say it here. Can I get another box? Can I get something else on this part of the network? Can I log into his machine even as a regular user? Okay, cool, I'm in. I'm sitting there, I capture his hash. He may not be a domain admin, but I've captured elevated privileges. privileges. I'll log into the servers. Do a little happy dance. You know, now I'm on your server network. I'm capturing live creds from memory on your server because likely you've got running processes that I've been able to exploit as a, not even exploit, being able to see, inject into as a regular user or an admin user that has those pr privileges on that machine. I dump the passwords from memory. Wait a minute. Now I have domain admin. As a domain admin, where can I log into on a network? Anywhere I want. So again, I'm going to your database servers. I'm going to your SharePoint servers that houses all your intellectual property. I'm using it to create another user to give myself application access to your front end system so that I can log in and dump everything because the database is too big for me to dump. Too slow for me to talk, copy everything over. Oh, shoot, I'm right at the end. So that being said, a couple of things in conclusions. Things as an organization you need to be doing. Check your logs. Watch them religiously. Know and distinguish traffic. If you see Bob from accounting's 
logging into your servers at 2 in the morning. What the hell is Bob doing? Is it really Bob? Likely no. Likely it's me. Likely I'm slurping your data down. Why is your SA account, or why is your service account logging in and checking your databases when it's not backup, the scheduled backup time? And why do I have interactive login rights to your servers? You need to be checking your logs. You need to be vigilant. Just because you think you've set things up right, you need to be looking for it. You need to be looking for the anomalous traffic. The other thing about it is you need to be the strongest link. You need to become the strongest link because your technology will and can fail, can and will fail. We will find ways around your technology, but you as the, as the admins, the users, will find those things happening and can report it up to the right people so that they can raise that flag and say, hey, wait, we're done. we got to stop this. Thank you, everybody. Hopefully I gave you something to think about and consider.